Today we're going to do a quick briefing on how to take uh, intraoral dental photography. So I've got my Nikon camera here with a dual camera flash, but you can do the same thing with a um, ring flash as well. It's all pretty much the same in terms of big picture stuff. Little minor details which we'll go through later. Um, so I've got Emma here who's got retractors and she'll be helping me retract. We'll also go through with the patient doing it as well. Now a few things to remember as well is when you're using a camera, most of the time you've seen them on a tripod. And with that, with the tripod, there's three legs. So usually you have your feet apart and you have your hand on the camera. The trouble with sometimes is that when we do dental photography, we need to hold a mirror as well. So you don't have that third leg of your tripod. So a few ways you can do that. One is to put your um, elbow on your knee. That's one way. Or the other way is you can lean on your nest if they put their elbow out or on their shoulder just to give yourself that extra support. So otherwise you'll find that as your camera is shaking, it can't get the autofocus and it takes forever to take the actual photo. The other thing to help with the autofocus is to make sure your lights are bright on in the room. So I'm going to turn these lights up a little bit more because that's going to help us with the brightness of everything that's going on here. So we've got lovely Katie who's our lovely assistant for this afternoon. So thank you. And let's go Emma. So I'm going to do the um, buckle retracted closed picture first, sorry, the anterior closed picture first. So bite down together. I'm going right up and it's further forward towards the patient's nose than you'd expect. And just open slightly there for me, Katie. Beautiful. And that gives you the open photo as well. The next ones we're going to do is the buckle retraction shots. Um, and so that's to see where the molar position is. And you want to get as much buckle as you can. If you don't get buckle, then you get a different relationship to the molars than you think. For instance, if I take one on this angle, which is not really buckled, you retract it. All of a sudden, it looks like Katie's got a class two molar relationship. Well, if I come all the way down, and you'll notice I've got my elbow on my knee. Down, now I can see there's a lovely class two molar relationship. It is class two. <laughs> but we had only half a class two before, now we've got a full class two now. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Bite down all the way, and again, I've got my elbow on my knee, helping me. Beautiful. Now we're gonna use some mirrors to do the occlusal shots. Um, there's always this debate about, do we have to reverse the mirror shots or do we not? Um, my philosophy is it doesn't matter what you do, just make it consistent. If you never reverse it, then don't ever reverse it. And if you reverse it, make sure you reverse every single one. Um, I never reverse it because it's easier to do it that way. So the easiest way to stop fogging is to get some tap water, some warm water, and dunk it in there for a few seconds. If you don't want to do that, the nurse with a triplex works just as well. Or you can get your patient to stop breathing, but unless your insurance is really good, try not to do it for more than 30 seconds or so. Alrighty, let's give this a go. So Emma's going to retract the upper lip with a little lip retractor. Just move aside just a little bit there. Beautiful. Going to pop this in. And I'm just leaning on Emma's hip just a little bit there. Just to give me that third little bit of stabilization. Obviously you check with the nurse, that's okay first. I won't just go hipping them all the time. <laughs> Alrighty. And just with the other hand if you can. Beautiful. And open there if you can. Let's retract that lower lip. Beautiful. You can get the patient to put their tongue up to the very top and just get them to relax. Tongue up to the very top of your mouth. Just relax your tongue now. Beautiful. Excellent. Now that's all the orthodontic photos, intraoral photos taken. So we're going to take some photos of the occlusals of the teeth close up. Um, this is better than any intraoral camera you'll get. Um, you can zoom up to these quite a lot and get a lot of detail. Again, let's give this a little bit of a heat with the hot water so it doesn't fog up. If you don't get hot water quickly from your tap using a, um, a coffee machine that heats up water really fast, that's an easy good way of getting hot water fast or a kettle would work too, but you just need to be prepared. So let's do quadrant one please. So again, I might use Emma's elbow, beautiful. And I might go and take the palatal as well in case there's some cracks that I want to see. 
and the buckle, we just go around the buckle and we click on that as well. Beautiful. We're going to do quadrant two next. The same sort of thing. Quizzle. Total. And the buckle. Beautiful. And we'll pop around. Beautiful. Quadrant three. Same thing here as well. I'll just do the occlusals. And the occlusal in quadrant four as well, please. And obviously, if there's lots of saliva, your nest can dry that out as well. Beautiful. Now I'll take one behind the lower front teeth. That's a good one to take to show patients um, calculus buildup or bacterial buildup that's around their teeth. Beautiful. Just come around that way if you can. Yep, beautiful. So that just sits right near the tongue. Um, sideways is probably the best way to go. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, if you want to do this without a nest, it's also really possible. It just takes a little bit of education of the patient. So, yeah, so you'd start off with, um, thank you. You'd start off with something like, Katie, would you mind grabbing these for me? Sure. Just popping in your teeth like a snorkel almost. So in between your teeth, yep, perfect. And bite down together and stretch if you can. Usually you get better photos with this because the patient knows how much they can actually stretch. So bite down together, beautiful. And open if you can, perfect. And then you say, I'll just take that one off you. And can you please replace it with that one, please? And bite down together. And just push that towards your ear if you can. Beautiful. And bite down together. And switch those around if you can. And bite down together and pull it towards your ear as well. Beautiful, thank you. Excellent, and I'll take both of those off for you. Thank you. And I've got this retractor. Now, this is a little horseshoe retractor. As I've seen a lot of wear and tear, it used to be all black, but after autoclaving it hundreds of times, it's, it's quite gray now. But you can tell the patient, like this is gonna go on your upper teeth, between your lips and your teeth and you're gonna hold your lips back. So yeah, that's it, pop it in, or you can help them pop it in, and just hold it up exactly like that. It's almost like you've done this before, Katie. <laughs> and again, with the mirror, just open there if you can, beautiful. And just, would you mind popping it to your other hand? So taking it out, turning around, and on your lower teeth this time, or your lower lip, I should say. And open there again. Beautiful, excellent. We can do the same thing We're using this with the um, occlusal mirror as well. So if you just pop it on your upper teeth again, or your upper lip, just hold that back. Yep, beautiful. Perfect, just open there if you can. And you can go around taking the exact same pictures that we did last time. That's right, exactly what it is, it's fine. Just pop it out for a second there for me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you want to do on the lower teeth as well? So flip around to the other hand. Excellent. And open there again. What I did then was my hands are getting tired, so I use my near my um, my thigh again just to help give me some support. And just once more on your lower teeth, so we can. Take a picture behind your bottom teeth. So just open there for me, a bit wider. Beautiful. 
Thank you, Katie. I'll grab that for you. Excellent. Now the advantage of having this dual point um, flash system rather than a ring flash, so dual point meaning there's two points of light, is I can turn it away and bounce the light off the ceiling and off the floor. That gives a more flattering image when you're taking extraoral photos. For intraoral as well, rather than having this big ring light in the front of the teeth, you actually only get two small lights on the side, so it means your technician's got more information to work with. That being said though, if you're going to choose, the ring flash is easier if you're first starting off, so you don't have to worry about the angulation of this and how that's working. So to take extra oil photos, we're going to turn, if you can, turn the flashes away from the subject, so you bounce the light off the roof and off the floor. Now out of interest, if you're doing party photos, you should be doing that too. So rather than taking the flash straight at someone, you want to point the flash away if you can. And we're going to turn the f-stop number as low as possible. So it means the iris is going to become as big as it possibly can. So I'm going to get Katie to turn towards me now. So Katie, just turn towards me. And we're going to take some photos. So straight there, beautiful. And big cheesy smile if you can. Perfect. And just turn towards that wall if you can. And this is for ortho photos if you want to take these ones. Look straight ahead. And big cheesy smile. Beautiful. Excellent. So, so that's what the F, F does. Yeah. So the bigger the F, the smaller the, the hole. How does it look? Yuck. So yuck. <laughs> the good it's, photo is about my teeth. It's this one here. Yeah. That one. That's what a K, isn't it? Around yuck. In my defense, I did have three surgeries where I could not brush my teeth <laughs> adequately for a very long time. Yeah. Just in my defense. But that wasn't causing any pain at all, was it? No. No pain. And yet it's still not the nicest looking looking tooth. So would you are you more motivated to do something about it now that you've seen it than mm -hmm. before? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Is that just staining? That looks like staining. But here's a good example of, of how when someone, even in the dental industry, that has a look at their own teeth, all of a sudden concern increases quite rapidly. Like, all of a sudden they're asking about stains and things, where before it was just bliss and happiness. <laughs> it's all right, but next time um, Beck gives you those lollies, <laughs> you can conscientiously say no now. <laughs> 